Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm here at Lost Creek Machine this morning. It's very cold outside, but it's pretty nice in here. And the whole idea today is I want to show you these little Unimat lathes. So let's take a look. I brought mine along so we can compare it to the one that they have for sale. Okay, this machine is the one donated by Bill Kirkland. I own this little machine. Canadian Edelstat. Very similar to the one that Matt has on display here at Lost Creek, only this one is set up in the milling or drilling uh, mode with the head vertical so that you can compare the two. Remember, these are multi-purpose machines. Mill, drill, lathe, sander, saw, etc., etc. So the machines, I think, are almost identical, made in Austria. However, I do love the little aluminum handles on here. I think mine is probably newer because it has the cheap plastic knobs on it that I would like to either replace or maybe make aluminum knobs as a project because there's three of those little cranks. One, two, three. Also, Unimat suggests that you mount these either on a board or a piece of steel. This is a little bit overkill here with about 5 8 thick steel, so I'm going to use 3 8 or whatever I can come up with here. But really the main reason I'm, I came today is I do not have this little milling drilling table. You can buy them, I think, on eBay, but this is cast iron. I intend to make my own, so I already cut a blank and brought it along, and this is cast aluminum, 3 inch by 5 inch, about the same size as a index card, as you can see. And I did want to get the dimensions here in regards to the T-slots, and I've already drawn that up by measuring, and I will make a video of that sooner or later, so watch for that. I would prefer cast iron or steel, but these little T-slots are pretty difficult to cut in steel, so aluminum is what it will be. I know I've shown this box before, but let's take a look again. The, he does not have as many accessories here as what I do. Matter of fact, there is no three-jaw or four-jaw chuck, but you can see various components here including a little tool post plus what you see over here on the machine itself. Now if you're wondering what this little device is, it's really a tool rest for holding the chisel when you turn wood, something that I will never do so I'm not really interested in that at all. This machine was originally owned by a man that works on uh, model railroads or something like that and he's retired and he moved away so he sold this and a bunch of other things that he used, but he is the one that apparently made this mechanism here for raising and lowering the head, I guess, accurately compared to just using the quill. And this man must have been a craftsman because this is very nicely made with bearings and an Acme screw, so you can raise and lower the drill with this. Pretty nice, really. By the way, this machine is for sale on their website as of January 2024, if anyone is interested. Now, one thing I do not like about this one is that the switch is an inline switch. Do not particularly like that, where mine has the switch right here, which I think is a little handier, although you have to reach around the pulleys and belts 
in order to operate it and that could be a little dangerous I'm not real sure they did not put guards on these older machines however the Unimat 3 that I owned for a while I think was fully guarded if I remember correctly I'm not real sure why this has been modified as you can see he must have had a reason but I don't know what it was I want to tell you something that probably many people do not know and that is that these machines of course are made in Austria and they were made by EMCO e -M -C -O, but they have different names on them. For instance, this one will say Canadian Edistal. And this one, American Edistal. Well, what does all that mean? Well, Emco is the manufacturer, and Edistal, at least in the northern, or I should say, uh, North America, were the distributors and some say that they were related I don't know if that's true but I had never seen an actual Emco lathe until recently but there is one here at Lost Creek so we're going to take a look at that and compare it with these and it's over here among the lathes so let's go over there and take a look Now this machine has a travel dial, if you've never seen a travel dial. Very accurate and very expensive. So let's compare the big Emco with the little Emco.